Hey everyone. So, you might have noticed that I'm not as cheerful as I normally am, and there's a good reason for that. You see, I have an apology to make. Yes, something happened, or something is going to happen in this episode that is going to make some people, in fact, a lot of people, very, very angry. So, let's deal with the elephant in the room and um, just come out with what it is. I'm going to be changing the head on my Audi TT. I'm taking this chorus out and replacing it with a modern day 21st century touchscreen Apple Tune, Apple Play system. Yeah, I know. You see, in the Audi community, there are these die-hard guys, die-hard people. You might be one of them watching now who will tell you, you cannot remove the center console from your Audi TT. It is the heart of that car, especially with that aluminium flap, that well-engineered aluminium flap, that aluminium flap that is in no other car, you cannot remove this. If you remove this, you have committed sacrilege, the worst crime ever. And by taking this out of the car, well, that is it, end game. Even worse still, I am taking that unit out, the aluminium center console and replacing it with this, yes, this unit. So let's talk about this. So this is made by a German company. So I bought this from Germany. I'll put a link to the, in the description down below. This is a double DIN unit. Now this is the second time I bought one of these. When I first started my channel way back when, back in 2018, in fact, Mark 2018, three years, three years, four years ago. Yeah, four years. This month, I installed one of these in my V6 TT. And it went down very well actually. It was a very good unit. It allows you to put an aftermarket system in there. You retain the original heating system and, um, and then it just looks so natural in the car. And I've seen some other ver variations of this unit, but none of them look as good as this one here. So today we're going to be fitting that to the Mark 1 TT. Now, if you are a purist, and there are many of you out there who watch this channel. Maybe you want to switch off now and come back next week when we do something else. But if you're like me, and you spend all your time in your car listening to one of these, all your music is streamed on this, you don't want to be sitting in a car playing a tape. No one plays a tape. In fact, half of you don't even know what a tape is. And then there's the CD player. Yes, my car, it's the chorus. So the chorus, a radio head um, unit comes with a CD player. I only discovered that today. Would you believe that? I mean, when was the last time you sat down and burnt a CD to play in your car? I can't even remember the last time I did that. In fact, again, a lot of you listening to or watching this channel may not even know what a CD is. Ask your dad, maybe your granddad. But most people stream their music and I always stream my music and I listen to DAB radio. So when you're sitting in your car, you want decent music. You want modern day sound. And I, and I kind of like mixing the old with the new because the old classic shapes and, and designs of vehicles, you'll never change that. That is classic. They are individual. They were individual. They were brilliant. And of course, adding a modern day hint of technology, I think is a good mix, a, a, a well good balance. Anyway, let's not chat anymore. Let's get on and show you. Let me show you the kit that I'm going to install in the car. Now, in terms of the head unit that I'm fitting, I'm fitting this. Now, this is an Amazon special. It's, uh, the company is just called Car Media. Actually, they're called BN, but the kit is just a Car Media kit. That's it. The reason why I picked this is because Look how thin it is. Yeah, that is it. it. Basically, it's an Android based system and it allows you to use CarPlay, 
and I use CarPlay all the time, which is the reason why I've gone for this. Now, it is slightly wider, but it fits nicely in here. So basically, when that's in place, like that, excuse my light, you can still get to the heater controls down below here, which is great. So that's the radio unit. Oh, did I mention by the fact that the binnacle has also got these apertures for the lights, which come with the kit as well. So the cigarette lighter light, when you turn on your lights, it lights up and highlights the binnacle below, which is really good. Now, let's deal with the elephant. No, it's not the elephant in the room. A thing that causes a lot of confusion when people fit aftermarket radio sets into their TTs and Audis of that generation, the 19, late 1990s to early 2000s, is what ISO kit that I get. Now, if you wonder what ISO is, ISO is a international standard for car stereos. Now, some companies have gone a little bit sort of left field of that, but it is a standard that means that all if you buy a kit and it complies with ISO, you should just be able to plug it in with some adapters. Now, of course, Audi kind of went left field to that. And their system is quite complex because it's got CAN bus in there because the CAN bus can communicate with uh, VCDS or um, Irwin, which is what Audi use. And it tells it if there's a problem with the um, system. And of course, what CAN bus does as well is it does away with the need to have recognition um, and then a live ignition cable or power from the ignition because CAN bus basically switches on the uh, radio. Now that's a problem. And especially if you've got a Bose system and the Bose system is the thing that causes the most issues because the Bose amp has line out instead of your um, plus or minus for your speaker. So how do you know what is which and what wiring kit do you need? Simple. When you take the LD headset out and before you do this, if you are planning to keep it, make sure you know the radio code, okay? So let me show you my radio that I've taken out of the car. This is a chorus head, it's got a cassette, it's also got a CD player. Now on the back of chorus, you've got these three plugs here. Now on my car, it uses just the top one and, sorry, the top one here and the bottom one here. Now, if you take out your headset and you see just two black plugs, that means you've got a Bose system, a Bose amp in the car. If you take it off and you see three and one of those are brown, that means you don't have a Bose system and you can plug a cheaper ISO wiring harness into your car. Now, there's two wiring harnesses and what they look like. So the first one, this is a standard system without Bose. So if you've got a headset without Bose, this is the kind of headset that you want, okay? Or the ISO kit that you want. So you've got this connection and this connection here, which plugs into the original head. And then this, the brown one, that is your speakers. So that's basically, uh, plugs that plugs into the original brown plug that comes out of the old radio. This plugs into your new one, your ISO, okay? And then you get this little transistor in the middle here. If you have a Bose system, this will not work, okay? So there's no getting around it. You cannot use this system. What you need is a system like this. This is from Incartech. It costs around 40 pound. And what this does is it is a amplifier interface. So it interfaces between the Bose and allows your aftermarket headset to talk to your Bose system. So this is the end that plugs into your original connectors and that's all if you've got two so you've got the red one here that plugs into the one of the black ones and then you've got this black one here which is the power you also need an additional cable so this red cable here this one cable here needs to connect to a live ignition so ignition so basically when you get 12 volts that comes to the car when the ignition comes on that's what this cup needs to connect to, and it is this that turns on your headset. Now, you can take off the binnacle underneath the steering wheel and try and find a 12 volt. That's a tough way to do it. The way that I'm going to be doing it is I'm going to be using a piggyback fuse. Yes, a piggyback fuse, which is this. So basically, you pull out a fuse, you put that fuse into one of the 
empty slots here. You obviously put your fuse that you need for your system and then this plugs in its place. Now, there's some been some pros and cons about these things. Some people don't like them, some people love them. I, I generally love them because it's a fused outlet and then you feed this through into where your radio breaks out. Now, on this, that then connects on to this red cable here. I've put in a connector here and it plugs in like this. Simple. A word of warning. Do not plug this here. I've got mine because the in car tech system came with a uh, female connector for the power, which is really silly. What I've had to do is fit a male connector. So I would strongly suggest that you do not plug this in until you've got this plugged into the in car tech and it's protected. Otherwise, if you plug that in, you're going to end up shorting your car out and you don't want to do that, okay? Because the body of the car is earth and it's going to take a little while. So that is that. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you have a bowl system, you will need an amplified system, okay? And this system here, in car tech, it's, their amplifier interface is all pre-wired. Literally, the only thing that I had to do was, there's a two, basically it had an ISO connector here, but because the head unit that I'm gonna fit came with this connector and all of these, then I've had to cut off the ISO, put this in here, but most systems will come with an ISO connector and that plugs straight in. And that is it, simple as that. And then you've got these two plugs here. Now these two brown cables, these are for the CAN bus. So if your car supports CAN bus, you can plug these in. If it doesn't, leave them loose. Hope that makes sense. Let's go and fit this in the car. Right, so our first job today is to remove this binnacle. To do so, you just need to remove these side stands here and then the whole thing will drop away because it's basically held in place with these two bolts here and here and then two down the bottom. As simple as that. And the great thing about working in a roaster is you can have the roof open, which is what we've done to give us a bit more light. So let's get those that side and that side off and then we'll go on to the next stage. Right, so we've taken the sides off as you saw there. Um, there are three screws I forgot to mention, two I've taken out already. So one here, one here, and then there's also one just below the gear stick there. Little, little one in there that you probably can't see. That needs to come off. When that comes off, this binnacle here, the outer, oh, the outer skin will come off. So let's get that off now, and then um, we can then start working on the in a in a skeleton as i call it Right, so we're just left with this outer skeleton to remove and that is held together with one, two and I think there is another one up here somewhere that I've not seen. So we'll undo that one, then we'll see if it wiggles free. If it does, great. If not, we'll find that mystery one. A few moments later. Right, center binnacle is off. Basically, there is these Stupid. There's basically a bolt there and a bolt there. If I show you one here, and they hold this screw here and this screw here in place. To get to them, you've got to remove the glove box, and then this will just clip off here. But it's such a silly design. But you know what? It is what it is. Okay, so that's the center binnacle off. Now what we need to do is we need to take the heater control this bit here 
and now connect it up into our console then we can then fit the whole new console inside here so let's go back up to the office but that is how you remove a console and what you'll get left with is you'll get left with the original TT um, internal binnacle you'll then have the external binnacle if you want to keep that so that fits over there and of course the cigarette lighter as well so we won't be we're going to be using a couple of the cables uh, I need to figure out which one it is I think it's this one here so we're going to use be using this for the um, lights underneath the the new binnacle that we're going to be putting in so there's plenty of space here for us to use which is brilliant that's the main thing we got plenty of space so let's get our new binnacle ready to be installed right so we're back upstairs in the office here is our heater control from the TT as you can sell and um, obviously this is our new unit that we're going to fit in now just to show you how good this unit fits I mean not only do you have these aluminium um, fitments for the actual control you can just see the craftsmanship and here we go let me just slide that into place and you see just how well the whole thing just fits into place there you go look at that bang straight in as far as I'm concerned that is as OEM as you're ever going to get in fact it's better than OEM as far as I'm concerned because I've got a doubled in aperture right I'm going to screw all this into place and then I'm going to show you the finished product how it looks one hour later okay so we've got the head back into the uh, binnacle and we've secured it using the original brackets that came with the head unit so it is in nice and secure now this is a little stubby antenna I don't know what that is I need to look at the instructions but it also has a standard antenna at first I thought this is, could be a um, Bluetooth antenna or Wi-Fi antenna which is what I think it possibly is anyway our heat controls are in as well so from the back this looks pretty good doesn't look messy at all and of course from the front which is the money shot looks fantastic don't you think so you can still see the heater controls there they're all okay and it just looks just looks great looks OEM doesn't it as you can see the head unit sticks out it's a wide screen double din so it's quite a big screen which is nice and if you just look for the sides there you can see it's it's in tight and there's nothing re there's nothing showing as well so it's a good fit so now what we've got to do is take this and the wiring loom that we created earlier and get this connected to the car and to be honest that shouldn't take long so let's do that okay so assembly time here's our unit we've run our red cable through and like i said it's not connected up it's just sitting loose there so what we're going to do now is we'll offer up the unit onto the frame we'll do a loose fit first to make sure it's working I'll do that offline because if it plays music, which it will, I'll get demonetized. So we'll play it and then we'll get some YouTube music that we can play on this unit. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention, you will need one of these DIN connections for the aerial. So that connects to the original Audi aerial. So it connects in like so, and then this end obviously connects to your radio head through the hole down there. All right, let's fit it all up. And there we have it. Our unit has fired up and is now live and working. So let's have a look now. Go from my music list and you can see that it's all working fine good so i'm going to now just bolt this up into the head unit now that we know that this is working and then we can see how that looks completed
Right, okay, so let's uh, fire this up. We've got our little USB stick with some YouTube friendly music and um, let's see how we get on. So as you can see, fits really well the unit in here. Everything is still accessible, our heating controls, etc. Now, we've got a radio. Radio is working just fine. Um, and it goes straight into um, my Apple Play, which is brilliant. Now, the benefit of obviously having this is I now have proper sat-nav in the car and here's Waze as well. Right, so we're gonna go home now. We're gonna play some music and we're gonna see and hear what that sounds like. As soon as we work it out. USB, there we go. Sounds good to me. And the good thing about this is it's got touch screen volume control, so I can touch it and wake it up. Oh, it is very powerful. It's quite good. Right, next. And of course we get the titles up as well. This is very good. I'm quite impressed with this. Um, I'll put a link for the radio the unit in my uh, description down below and you can see it in my Amazon store, but basically it does exactly what we want it to do. Playing great music, it sounds good, and with the in-car tech system, it complements the Bose system and it utilizes the Bose system really well. Right, excellent. So, nothing more to do on this really. Right, okay, so, radio's in the car, or the new headpiece is in the car. Actually, I'm really impressed with the sound of that system, so links below for the system if you're interested. Like I said, it'll be in my Amazon store and I'll put a direct link below as well. Tell me what you think. Do you think that I have uh, created the, or I have um, committed the ultimate sin by taking out the, uh, the um, aluminium flap and not put a single DIN system in? Be interesting to hear your thoughts. But I think I like it. I love it actually, because I can now stream the music, put the, head, the um, roof down and, and really enjoy it. Now next week we've got um, just a couple of dressing up things to do on that car now, and that car will be pretty much finished and ready to be sold. Yeah, so what's next? Do we have another project? Well, yeah, we do have another project. We've got the garage to do and that's the next thing that's coming up. But what about cars? Because you don't tune in here to watch me do car uh, garages, do you? Have we got a car? Well, yeah, we do have another car. But you're not going to see that for a few weeks. If you're Patreon, you will probably find out what that is this weekend. But for everybody else, you'll just have to wait a little longer. Okay? So there's an issue that I need to solve on that TT. You, and we'll do that next week. Um, there's water getting into the car. So with the rain that we had last week, the car got quite damp inside. Well, I found where that water source is. So we need to sort that out next week. So you'll stay tuned for that. Other than that, don't forget to subscribe down here. If you're a casual viewer, click on the bell notification so you're notified whenever we see release a new video and we will see you next week. So have a great one guys and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>